Hey, it's Joel, 3D Pretty Nerd. I got this TiVo little monster finally built. It was on a live stream not that long ago that I I was able to finally get it going and I got the Z height adjusted thanks to a lot of really awesome people listening in and watching on the stream. Once I got that adjusted, I was able to print out, well, I was able to print out this, but I had to stop it because I wasn't gonna be home. I didn't get a chance to actually film or time-lapse the build process. And this is part of the reason why I can't do a lot of printers that I build. So I built this on the kitchen table during uh, family movie night. We were watching Guardians of the Galaxy 2, and I watched it from the kitchen table while putting this together. But I did take some pictures along the way. Uh, well, here, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you about the pictures. Once you opened the box, there was a nice piece of foam right there, and on top of that foam was a Ziploc baggie full of all the instructions you would hopefully ever need. Now, uh, when you get the parts out of the foam, it's interesting. They're in these little bags and they're labeled like A1, A4, A7, A9-1, A2-1 and stuff like that. But each of the stickers has QC passed on it, you know, quality control. And I don't know if this means that they're just by default quality control approved or if they only put the stickers on after they verify the content. So. I just, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. In this image, you see my buddy, Loud Josh, helping out, and that look on his face, well, that means business. In this picture, you can see that I've got the bottom plate, I've got these extrusions attached, I got the top plate, I got the motors, and I got the motors mounted, and I've got the little, uh, these little brackets that hold the arms, I got those in as well. And uh, if you look in the manual, right here, you can see that these have eccentric nuts that you can adjust to make the wheels go further apart or closer together to get a nice, good, tight fit in the extrusions. And one of the things I was dealing with, these would just fall and the BL touch needed to be off of the build plate when you turned it on. So I had to hold this up and turn it on and then hit home to get it up to the top. It was just kind of, it just kind of sucked. In the stream, people are like, you need to adjust the eccentric so that this doesn't fall. TiVo said you don't need to adjust the eccentrics because of this new firmware. And they gave me new firmware. When you power on the printer, it homes it before initiating the BL touch. So that's good news right there. In this image, you see an end stop. It's an optical end stop. I believe it's not a micro switch. And I've heard some people talk about these optical end stops not being as good of quality as the micro switches. And that's something I will investigate. In this photo, the dog is photo bombing, but you can see that I've got the effector plate all set up. I got the arms attached and the printer assembly was going well. And don't forget, together is a something that I can't read in the background of the photo. Here's a close up of the effector plate. It's a bunch of wires, it's pre-assembled for the most part, and all the wires are labeled, and all those labels are labeled two parts on the board that you see right here. And this board goes on the top plate. Look at all those labels, they're so wonderful. Once everything was plugged in, I turned it on, and no joke, it worked the first time. I was like, yes, that was fantastic. I saved the actual, uh, like the configuration and the calibration for the live stream, and thank goodness I did, because I had a lot of people helping me out on that. So, so far, my first impressions of this machine are decent. It's not for a beginner. That's for certain. The assembly process did seem to be documented fairly well. I was thankful for the community help in the Facebook groups, and I was thankful for the people in the chat of my live stream that helped me with this. The Sparky Face 5 Omnum model actually printed really well, I think. Someone said it was over extrusion, and Dustin said that I had some micro vibrations possibly from the floating extruder right there, or possibly because my my armature wasn't tight and the belts weren't tight. Funny thing is I, I tightened the belts a little bit further and then the belts uh, that are held onto these brackets in the back, e each side of the belt is held on with two of these zip ties and they're brittle and they broke. So I, I, I've had to take the top off and redo the belts four times now and I'm tired of doing it and I hope I don't have to do it any further. The manual does go through Repetier hosts and allows you to plug in to talk to the printer. When I did upgrade the firmware, uh, I had the, the little touch screen that's up there wasn't actually talking to the main board and apparently I didn't know this until now, it's, it's smoothieware and the board communicates to the touchscreen via a serial interface, and the touchscreen was set to 250,000 for the baud rate rather than 115, 200. I remember back in the day when it was a 300 baud modem and I had to set my phone on it. That's, 
That's the good old days. So that's the update on this little monster. It's now built. It's, I believe, configured. It's printing. And prints are looking okay. I'm, I'm looking forward to printing more with this. I know people have taken the flying extruder and mounted it to the side. People have taken the spool and mounted it to the side. People have talked about the golden ratio for layer heights. I did this one in 0.2 and someone said, no, 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 do 0.1618. And I was like, what? And apparently it's a thing. So I get to talk about that because it's math related and math is cool. Oh, and to note the entire build of this printer was done with only the included tools that TiVo gave. I think only one of the screws stripped out, which I was thankful for because if, if you weren't positioned exactly right with these, with these Allen keys, I, you would be stripping screws. So I only got one stripped screw, hooray. All right, well finally, I think this is the last finally. TiVo has given me a code to get this machine at a discount. I think it's an interesting machine. I will do a full review and if you know what you're getting into and you have some skills, I think it's a decent deal so far. I still need to put it through a bunch of prints, but at the same time, there's a code. You can get this cheaper. It is not an affiliate code. So I make $0 from you using this code. TiVo offered me an affiliate code and I said, no, how about you just give me a code that lets people save as much money as possible. I don't wanna make any money from it. And they said, that's great. So the code and the link will be down in the description if you're interested in the little monster. Beyond that, let me know what you wanna print on this thing. If you have one, let me know what you've done to modify it or make it print better. And you know what? Happy printing. This is awesome. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And a big thanks to everybody that supports me via Patreon and YouTube Red. And if you let the ads play. And don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys. As always, Om Nam is cool. And high five.